In the vast tapestry of our galaxy, filled with frozen gas giants, barren rocky worlds, and endless silence, there is one planet that refuses to play by the rules. That planet is K218b. It orbits a dim red dwarf star more than 110 light years away in the constellation of Leo, a place so distant that light leaving it when Galileo first turned his telescope skyward is only just now arriving to us. Yet despite that staggering distance, this alien world may be the closest thing we have ever found to Earth and, perhaps more importantly, to life beyond it. For years, astronomers suspected something unusual was happening on this strange world. At first came whispers of water vapor drifting high in its skies. Then came faint hints of carbon-based molecules, the building blocks of biology as we know it. These were tantalizing clues, but they were easy to dismiss as chemistry playing tricks. That changed the moment the James Webb Space Telescope turned its vast golden mirrors toward K218b. With instruments capable of scanning atmospheres in detail humanity had never achieved before, Webb revealed something extraordinary, chemical signatures that could no longer be brushed aside. The findings were so striking, so unlike anything detected on another planet before, that they sent ripples through the entire scientific community. What Webb uncovered looked eerily like the clearest biosignatures we have ever seen on an alien world, gases that on Earth can only be produced by life itself. This was no longer speculation. This was data, hard and precise, staring us in the face. And for the first time in human history, we might be standing on the edge of admitting that we were never truly alone. K218b is what scientists call a Hycean world, a strange hybrid between an ocean planet and a gas-draped mini-Neptune. It is larger than Earth, with a radius 2.6 times greater and a mass nearly 8.6 times as heavy. Yet its true wonder lies in where it sits, right at the edge of its star's habitable zone, the delicate band of space where temperatures might allow liquid water to exist. Unlike the dry deserts of Mars or the stormy hellscapes of gas giants, K218b appears to be something far more promising. Models suggest it could be wrapped in a thick hydrogen-rich atmosphere that keeps conditions mild, protecting an enormous global ocean below from the deadly radiation of its red dwarf sun. For astrobiologists, this is a dream scenario, one that moves the idea of alien life from science fiction into a serious scientific possibility. When Webb's data confirmed the presence of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane in the atmosphere, scientists leaned forward in their chairs. On Earth, these compounds form part of the breath of biology itself. But then came the true revelation. In 2025, data from Webb's mid-infrared instrument revealed the presence of dimethyl sulfide, DMS for short. On Earth, this molecule is produced almost exclusively by living organisms, specifically tiny marine phytoplankton that drift in our oceans and release it into the air. To find it floating above a distant alien sea was like stumbling upon a fossil on Mars with a human fingerprint etched into it. It was not just chemistry anymore. It was a whisper of biology, a hint that something alive might be exhaling into the skies of another world. And just when scientists thought the surprise could not grow deeper, another molecule appeared, dimethyl disulfide, a more complex compound also linked to microbial activity in Earth's oceans. Together, these findings began painting a picture too compelling to ignore. K218b may be home to life, not as towering civilizations or strange creatures, but as microscopic alien organisms thriving beneath its waves. Cambridge astrophysicist Niku Madhusudan, who has studied the planet for years, argued that this was no longer wild speculation. These molecules were consistent, verifiable, and statistically significant. Something was happening on that world, something that echoed Earth's own early biosphere. For perhaps the first time, humanity had stumbled upon an exoplanet where life did not just seem possible, it seemed plausible. The natural question that followed was simple. If life exists on K218b, 
what might it look like? The most cautious scientists suggest it could be as humble as phytoplankton-like organisms drifting in alien seas, harvesting the dim red light of their cool sun to power a primitive form of photosynthesis. Others dare to imagine more complex possibilities, colonies of filter-feeding creatures drifting through nutrient-rich currents, perhaps leaving behind the faint chemical trails that Webb's instruments detected. Some even wonder if life could have evolved into stranger forms in such an environment, perhaps lightweight organisms adapted to the low gravity and high pressure, capable of leaping from sea to air in ways reminiscent of Earth's flying fish. If so, K218b might not resemble Earth as it is today, but Earth as it was billions of years ago when life was just beginning its long, miraculous climb. Yet with discovery comes debate. If life is truly breathing in the oceans of K218b, should humanity try to communicate with it? Some say absolutely not. Physicist Mark Buchanan has warned that actively reaching out could risk exposing Earth to civilizations we are unprepared to face, or worse, damaging a fragile alien ecosystem with our interference. Ethicist Anthony Milligan argues that we carry a moral responsibility not only to protect ourselves but to protect life wherever it may exist, even if it is microbial. Others, like Avi Loeb, counter that any civilization advanced enough to detect our signals has already noticed us, perhaps long ago, and that our silence achieves nothing. But regardless of the arguments, one truth remains inescapable. A message from Earth would take more than 120 years to arrive and another 120 to receive a reply. For now, all we can do is observe. We must wait. Even waiting, however, is not idle. The discovery has triggered a profound shift in priorities among space agencies and private explorers alike. NASA has begun fast-tracking projects like LUVOIR and HEBEX, powerful next-generation telescopes designed specifically to hunt for living worlds. The European Space Agency and China's CNSA are developing their own instruments, eager to peer deeper into the strange mists of K218b. And in the background, even more ambitious ideas are being whispered into reality. Breakthrough Starshot, a project backed by billionaire visionaries and leading scientists, proposes launching fleets of microscopic probes powered by lasers and pushed by solar sails. At 20% the speed of light, such probes could cross the abyss in five centuries. A long wait for us, but a blink in cosmic time. Perhaps no human will ever set foot on K218b, but one day, a probe carrying a spark of Earth may drift through its skies and send back the first postcard from an alien ocean. The impact of this discovery has extended beyond science. Around the world, religious leaders, philosophers, and ordinary people have wrestled with what it means. For some, it is proof of a grand design, a universe brimming with life and purpose. For others, it is a disquieting reminder that Earth is not unique, that we are one among countless worlds. Social media has erupted with excitement, hashtags like hashtag K218 Alive and hashtag Ocean World spreading as fast as the news itself. Documentaries and films are already in production, weaving fiction and fact into the story of humanity's first contact. Governments, cautious as ever, temper their words, balancing excitement with restraint. But beneath the official statements, something profound is happening. Humanity is shifting, subtly but unmistakably, toward a new sense of unity, not in fear of the unknown, but in awe of it. Alongside the excitement comes responsibility. International panels are now debating new protocols for planetary protection, not to shield Earth from alien microbes, but to shield alien biospheres from us. There is talk of creating exobiological sanctuaries, worlds where life may exist but must never be touched, probed, or contaminated. Some suggest establishing an interstellar no-fly zone, forbidding missions that might pollute these fragile ecosystems. The reasoning is simple yet profound. K218b has evolved for billions of years without us. We have no right to barge in. 
To listen is one thing. To intrude is another. Perhaps the most humbling aspect of K218B is what it reflects back onto us. It is a mirror held up across the abyss of space. Looking at its oceans and clouds, we are reminded of our own beginnings, of the fragile spark that turned Earth from a silent rock into a living world. Studying it may teach us not only how life begins, but also how easily it can be lost. It reminds us that our own biosphere is precious beyond measure, and that protecting it is not just an option but a responsibility. K218b is no longer just a distant entry in a telescope's catalog. It is no longer just a number on a star chart. It is a living possibility, a world that whispers the same chemical secrets as our own. And in that whisper, something fundamental has shifted. For decades, we asked the same question, are we alone? But now, as the molecules of water, methane, carbon dioxide, and perhaps the echoes of alien life reach our instruments, the question itself has changed. We are no longer standing on the edge of belief. We are standing at the edge of confirmation. K218b may be the first. It may be the closest. But it will not be the last. Thousands of worlds await us, hidden in the dark, waiting for their turn to be seen. And as we gaze at this watery giant shimmering in the light of its red sun, we are not just discovering the universe. We are discovering ourselves. The universe may still be vast and silent, but tonight, it feels smaller, more connected, and perhaps, for the first time in history, alive.